Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and trusting in Jesus. And before I start, I want to first thank everybody that prayed for my wife and our family. And we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts, really. You know, we haven't met majority of you, yet you pray for us because we are the same body of Christ. And so we thank the Lord for you and we thank you for the prayers. We did receive um, some, some good news. Although she had an aneurysm, the doctor found out that it was very small and potential, just virtually no threat. And that is not what caused the, the vision headache incident. It was more of a migraine. So we thank God it wasn't the result of like um, a life-threatening condition. So she will have to get her brain scanned once every two years to get that looked at. But um, it looks like uh, she's healthy and well right now. So we thank God for that. And no matter what happens, we trust in the Lord as well you have reason to all children of God because God is sovereign good and in control and working everything for our good and his glory we have nothing to be afraid of today I want to talk about something um, I mean it's very serious because a lot of people are facing very difficult circumstances you know I, we talked through email and comments and Honestly, a lot of these difficult circumstances are actually impossible. Many of you cannot overcome these circumstances, these situations. It was impossible for me too. But praise be to God, God can overcome. He can save you. And I hope you never think, why me? Why am I going through this? While I see all my buddies and all these strangers living perfectly healthy lives, they're able to think without being overcome with fear and panic, depression. Don't think for a moment, why me? I wish I was like them. I wish I would just switch lives with, no. I say this because this is what I felt too, but I was very wrong. I was so blessed and so are you if you surrender and trust in God and he teaches you through this trial to humble yourself and to trust in him, that is a blessing that is just not tradable. You wouldn't give that up for anything. I wouldn't give it up for anything either. No one likes the pain during the trial, but once you're done with it and you look back, you won't trade it for anything. It's not just a saying, it's a reality. Yeah, God building your faith and teaching you to trust in him is worth more than any money in this whole world. So hang in there. Don't give up. You know, I want to cut to the chase on everything. You know, I don't want to go the long way. And what I'm telling you right now is all your sufferings that you're going through regarding your mind with anxiety, depression, all that, you can cast it over to God right now. I'm not saying you'll be healed right now or you'll be healed at a certain time. You know, X amount of days, but I know that you can have the peace of God right now if you would simply just believe. And I don't want to say simply believe like it's, you know, like so easy. In a way, it is easy because think about this. How were you saved? It was by God's grace through faith that you, you believed, right? That you were saved. In the same way, it is by grace through faith that you believe in his word and his promises. And so it is the Holy Spirit that enables you to believe. That's why it's kind of hard to say, it's like, oh, it's easy, but at the same time, it's granted to you. You don't work for it. It's not a reward that is owed to you. It is something that is freely given. And when God gives you know, these gifts, like your salvation, he doesn't give you like 10% at a time. It's all or nothing. He just gives it to you. And when God says that, I have been, when he says that you have been crucified with Christ, it's no longer you who live, but it's Christ who lives in you. He doesn't just give you 5% of Christ this year and 12% the next year. No, he gives all of Christ, all at once at salvation. And what you need to do is decide and choose to believe by faith by God's grace, that it is true. That you did die, and now it's Christ who lives in you because God said so. That's it. It is His word. 
that every word in the Bible is true. And so when you decide to choose, or when you decide to believe, and you and if you have trouble with believing, all you do is ask. Saying, God, I want to believe, help my unbelief. You know, I want to do this video. And you simply ask him, Lord, help me. This simple prayer, simple request in humbleness. And as you trust in him, he will act. Always does. Psalm 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Again, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. You know what the problem with a lot of people are? A lot of Christians, they say, Lord, please act and then I will trust in you. And they wait for years or months. You can't do that. You know, God put it in this order. And if you look at the Old Testament and New Testament, that's how it works. You know those priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to the Jordan River? They had to put their toes, their feet in the water before it split. It didn't split and then they start walking over. In the same way, you must first trust in him and then he will act. And when you trust in him, you have to know that he is working at all for your good and he is acting no matter what you see and no matter how you feel. Don't wait for the feelings. Don't wait for the act. Just trust. And he will surely act on your behalf for your good and your glory. You know, a lot of this life, you have to learn to surrender. You have to realize that there is nothing good in you apart, I mean, in the flesh, that is, as the Bible says, except Christ in you. And so when you try to overcome even just simple things like how to love others, actually they're not simple, like how to love others and uh, not to have a temper, some people can never overcome that. But it's not you who's living, but it's Christ who's living in you. And so in many of these situations and even your impossible circumstance, I think a good prayer is to acknowledge, Lord, I cannot and I will not try anymore. I'm not going to make recommitments. I'm not going to try to overcome this thing again. I'm done. I know it's impossible. But you can. If you want to, you can save me. And therefore, I will just cast it all over to you, trust in you, and wait on you. That's the victorious Christian life. It's to simply take him at his word. How are you able to say these things and believe it? It's because God said so. Matthew eleven twenty eight so simple. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Our victory is Jesus Christ himself. We go to Jesus. We lay at his feet. We cast all our burdens. We lay down our crowns. We humble ourselves. We look to him, and he gives us rest. And I know some of you have you know, mentioned Aaron, it's so hard for me to just let go. How do I let go? I tell you, it's very easy, actually. Letting go means to do nothing. You just stop trying. Say, God, I'm done. All this time, you saw I can't do it. But I know you can. And it's up to you. You promised in Galatians 2.20, it's, it's a done thing. It's not a promise I'm waiting for. It's a truth. I died, and it's now you who's living with me, who's living in me. I'm not doing the living anymore. It's not even my life, so it's all your responsibility. And you do what you want to do. And so you just trust in him, and knowing that he will act. And this is what happens when you decide to trust in him and simply believe. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 through 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green. 
and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. For those who do not know the Lord, they may seem nice and green on the outside, but their root is shallow. They are trusting in themselves. They are trusting in money, their good jobs, other people. But what does it take for money to disappear, for a life to be taken, for any catastrophe to happen? Not much. And when that heat comes, they will wither. But you who trust in the Lord, whose roots went deeper because of the storm knocking on the tree, because of the hardships, your roots went deeper because it had to, forced by the circumstances. And you looked for that living water and found Jesus as your life. And you drew your strength from Jesus alone. When that heat comes, when people, lives are taken, when you lose that job, whatever happens, you will not stumble because your water, your life supply does not come from money or anything superficial, but it comes from Jesus Christ himself. So no, you will not weather, you will not wither and you will remain green and you will not be anxious when things like the coronavirus or all this or that happens. And but you will continue to bear fruit instead. Trusting in the Lord is the way to live victoriously in this life. Cast it over to him. Trust in him for he is faithful. God bless you.